everyone, welcome to the ECAM channel. This week we invited Lin Yi again to present Dr. Levy's review article published on advanced functional materials. This time we will focus on section 4, Electrical Properties and Device Performance. For more information, please refer to the original paper. A link to the paper is given in the description of the video below. The fourth chapter summarized the electrolyte property of the fibers formed by the various fabrication methods discussed in the last chapter and the performance of their supercapacitors. Aside from the performance requirements for any electrolyte, such as the ability to store energy, high electrical conductivity, the fiber electrolytes also need to have high strength and flexibility to be constructed into textiles using a variety of textile manufacturing methods and withstand wear tear during use. As discussed in the last two chapters, during, uh, during the uh, maximum synthesis and the fabrication, there are many variables. Therefore, we have seen uh, maximum incorporated fibers exhibiting a wide range of properties. First uh, are the mechanical properties. Young's modulus stands for the fiber's ability to withstand elastic deformation. Maxine has the best single flake Young's modulus among all solution processable 2D materials. Therefore, there's no surprise once it's incorporated into fibers, it enhances the fibers Young's modulus, as we can see clearly from the two examples below. The next mechanical property is tensile strength. As we can see from the plot below, the fabrication method plays a big role when it comes to tensile strength. The maxine coated yarns are the ones grouped in blue. They have shown the highest tensile strength because they not only borrow strength from the substrate, but also receive reinforcement from the maxine flakes. The composite fibers are the ones in the middle, colored in gray. They have uh, generally shown a decrease of tensile strength with an increase of maxine content. This is an indication of poor adhesion between maxine and the substrate or the hosting material. However, there are exceptions. As we can see here, uh, though for most composite fibers, it's hard to have a good uh, tensile strength with uh, under high maxine loading, these Bicycle yarns marked with triangles were able to show decent tensile strengths at high maxine loading. The pink ones are the knit maxine fibers produced with spinning. They have shown the lowest tensile strengths because they don't have substrate nor host materials. Therefore, the whole tensile strength is the result of in the, the mechanical strength of individual maxine flakes and their interactions and packing density. A string at braid has shown very similar trends as tensile strings, with maxine coated yarns being somewhere on the top, reflecting largely the string at break of their substrate, and the knit maxine fibers at the bottom, since they have no substrate and nor host materials, and the maxine composite fibers and yarns uh, somewhere in the middle, and showing a decrease of string at break with increase of maxine loading. Even though most composite yarns show a strain and break of lower than 5% at a high maxing loading of over 70 weight percent, the bicycle yarns marked in triangles were able to achieve a high strain break, uh, again from the support of their carbon nanotube backbones. However, it's also worth pointing out, even though those composite fibers with high maxine loadings were only having a string at a break less than 5%, they could also show some level of flexibility and being tied into a knot. Next comes the electrical properties, which largely is about the conductivity. Due to the excellent conductivity of maxine, we often observe an increase of conductivity with the increase of maxine loading. However, there is no without exceptions. For example, for this uh, reference 100, we clearly see the uh, decrease of conductivity with the increase of maxine loading. This is because this is a bicycle yarn. 
When it comes to bike spooling, with the increase of maximum loading, the fiber diameter increases, therefore results in a lower conductivity by calculation. The magazine size and coagulation paths also plays a role. As we can see here from the knit magazine fibers research, even though they all have high conductivity, the highest was exhibited by the fibers with large maxing flakes solidified in the cortisone bus, which gives these large flakes a good alignment. Solvent selection also plays a role because as we know from literature, maxing flakes often exhibit a higher conductivity in aqueous solutions than organic solvents. Next, move to the electrical chemical properties of fiber electrodes. Our primary concern is capacitance. In general, capacitance increase with the increase of maxing loading. As we can see also from the chart below, uh, the fabrication method also plays a big role. The coated yarns were able to achieve high length specific uh, capacitance. However, their volumetric capacitance were only modest due to the high diameter of their substrate. The composite yarns were able to enjoy a smaller fiber diameter and a higher maximum loading. Therefore, there's no surprise they have a slightly higher uh, volumetric capacitance than the coated yarns. The bias gold yarns Aside from having a small fiber diameters and a high, even higher maxing loading, they also allow the maxing flakes to be more electrochemically accessible. Therefore, they have a higher capacitance than the composite yarns. The knit maxing fibers have reached the highest volumetric capacitance of 1265 farads per cubic centimeter. And this number was achieved by Knit maxing fibers from with small flakes solidified in cortisone bus. The small flakes compared to large flakes provide a larger number of defects and edges, which promote permeability and ion transport. When we talk about capacitance, we also need to mention the potential window. As we can see from this graph, most of the knit uh, maxine fibers and uh, coated maxine fibers, they have shown relatively similar window. However, when it comes to maxine composite fibers and yarns, the windows are more varied, first due to different electrolytes being used. When we compare the reference 100 to reference 129, we have seen that the when similar Maxine carbon nanotube yarns were put in two different electrolytes, the lithium chloride electrolyte gave a larger potential window. It is because the maxine defects and impurities in carbon nanotubes could act as catalysts in low pH values um, to promote hydrogen revolution reactions. We can also see from the top three researches that uh, other components within the fiber, such as carbonized pen, reduced graphene oxide, uh, or magnesium dioxide, can also play a role in determining the potential as all three exhibit higher potential window. This other component could affect potential window by either uh, limiting the access of iron to smaller maxine flakes or put a limitation on the choice of the electrolyte. Brief performance is also of great concern when it comes to supercapacitor applications. The brief performance is depends on first, the electrolyte iron size. The smaller the iron size often leads to a higher capacitance at high scan rate, as we can see from the example on the left. When the same electrolytes were placed in lithium chloride electrolyte um, and uh, sulfuric acid electrolyte, we observed a better rate performance in lithium chloride electrolyte. Also, the higher conductivity of the electrolyte, the better uh, often the rate performance. As we can see from the knit maxing fiber research, they were able to maintain 50% capacitance retention at 1,000 milliwatts per second, when most other electrolytes were only able to maintain 50% capacitance at 100 milliwatts per second. Aside from the capacitance of fiber electrodes, when they are constructed into supercapacitors, the supercapacitor design also plays a role in the overall device capacitance. Even though symmetric supercapacitors are easy to make, 
asymmetric supercapacitor also can often give us a larger potential window. Also, literature has seen many different device configurations. The parallel configurations are convenient, however, they are not very practical to tech cells. The twist ones are still wait to be seen whether they can be fed into industrial knitting machines. So far, it seems the knitted device have been the closest to commercialization. As we can see from the two asymmetric examples here, uh, asymmetric design was able to greatly expand the potential window and improve the device capacitance. Also, researchers also need to deal with the problem of resistance increase with increase of electrolyte lens. Two strategies have been developed so far to improve this problem. One is to use a commercial conductive yarn as a current collector, such as carbon fiber or silver coated nylon yarn. The second is to knit maxing coated yarn into fabric electrolyte providing multiple pathways for the flow of charges. As we can see from the research on the left, when the same lens of fiber electrolyte were knitted into a fabric, the resistance decreased a few times. Also, when it comes to knitted supercapacitors, the researchers were able to adjust the knit density and spacing between electrolytes to further improve the device capacitance. Last, this paper evaluated the textile manufacturing feasibility of the supercapacitors and uh, the fiber electrodes. Most of the maxing-based fiber devices uh, reported to date were only one to five centimeters in length. And many of the work discussed in this section integrated maxing-based fibers into textiles by hand stitching, embroidering, or manually operating knitting, which are slow and labor intensive. However, there were a few studies that have successfully demonstrated sufficient mechanical strength and durability of their fiber electrolytes to withstand industrial knitting regime. And this is the direction we want to go. As you may notice that we maintain our channel only on Sunday. The video in our eCam channel are completely free and only for educational purposes. Subscribe us and like our videos will certainly motivate us. If you have any questions, suggestions, or find anything that conflict of interest in any type, just leave us some comments. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.